meet one of Instagram's most famous playboys. He tours the world driving fast cars and eating at the world's finest restaurants. If you love tea, you put your hands up. He even gets hip hop stars like Wyclef Jean to play at his lavish parties, posting his exploits on his Instagram account under the name Teddy Ungerma. But this isn't your typical Instagram star. He's the vice president of a country. Equatorial Guinea, a small country in West Africa with a lot of oil. Teodoro Ningema Obiang is the second most powerful man in the country. His father is the world's longest serving president, Teodoro Obiang Ngema. The Obiang family has a massive fortune running into the hundreds of millions of dollars. Yes. But how have they made their money? <laughs> Equatorial Guinea has some of the most opaque national accounts in the world. Per head, it is the richest country in Africa, yet people live in plastic shack poverty. The most recent figures available from the World Bank suggest that three quarters of the population live below the poverty line. But the presidential family seem oblivious to the poverty. Pobreza. Una cosa, tampoco no hay pobreza. No hay pobreza. No. If the country is so wealthy, where is all the money going? I sometimes refer to Equatorial Guinea as the North Korea of Africa. There are no freedoms. Today, Equatorial Guinea has the widest gap between GDP per capita or income per capita and human development index, access to healthcare, access to water, access to education. Tutu Alicante is a lawyer from Equatorial Guinea who is an exile in the United States. He runs an organization that is trying to tackle corruption in his homeland. It is extremely dangerous for people in my country to speak their mind about anything the government deems political. He knows firsthand how the massive theft of public money has left little behind to fund public services. In Equatorial Guinea, going to a hospital is in fact uh, signing your own death sentence. My sister had a complication with a pregnancy and she died at the hospital, bled to death because there was no doctor in sight. While most of the population live in squalid conditions, Teddy splashes the cash, showing off his wealth on his Instagram account. Often using the hashtag luxury living, he reveals a life of privilege and excess. Court papers say he amassed around $300 million worldwide between 2000 and 2011, despite earning an official government salary of less than $100,000 a year. The Department of Justice alleged that Teddy embezzled millions of dollars from the public purse as cabinet minister. They discover, for instance, that he had purchased a multi-million dollar private jet, a mansion in Malibu, and then the luxury cars. The Department of Justice agreed a settlement of around $30 million with Teddy. This year, Teddy has found himself on trial again, this time in a separate case in France, charged with embezzlement and money laundering. After being unsuccessful in claiming diplomatic immunity, he failed to show up to any of the court hearings. Instead, he posted videos on Instagram of himself on safari near Victoria Falls. The French court valued his assets in France at around 100 million euros, including a large property bought for 25 million euros in Paris. The French public prosecutor has asked for a three-year jail sentence, a 30 million euro fine, and all of Teddy's assets in France to be seized. The vice president denies the charges. Okay, good. The future for Equatorial Guinea looks bleak. The president is aging, and his son is preparing to take over. This is someone that is more concerned about flushing his cash than governing the spendthrift strongmen of Equatorial Guinea are not the only presidential family in Africa who are under investigation for embezzling from the public purse. The presidents of Gabon and the Republic of Congo are also being investigated by judges in France. But Teddy's had a busy time of late, posting from the beaches of Brazil to the Great Wall of China. There are plenty of countries where regulators turn a blind eye to despots who want to hide their ill-gotten gains. But their secrets are increasingly being leaked. 
and it helps if the autocrats themselves do the leaking via Instagram. <laughs>